Hello everyone. In our previous session, we talked about the DHCP role on the network, and we said that the DHCP is responsible for giving out IP addresses to clients on the, on the network so that those clients can communicate. The DHCP server is also responsible for giving other configurations, for example, the router, the DNS server, and these options that you see listed here. We want to concentrate on a particular option here, option 60, which is the PXC option, pronounced PIXI, standing for pre-boot execution. And we want to take a look and see why is the option 16 needed on the network? And what do we do with that option 60 from the DHCP server? Here we have a scenario. We have some client computers on the network and we refer to them as bare metal because there is no operating system on these computers. They're right out of the box. These computers need to connect to the DHCP server on the network. Now, since there's no operating system, there's no boot device that you can use, what you're going to be using to connect to that DHCP server is your network card. And that's where we get the term PIXI or PXC, pre-execution environment. There's a feature built into that network adapter that enables the network adapter to connect to the DHCP server over the network and obtain the TCP IP client settings, even though there's no operating system. Under what circumstances would we want that to occur? Let us say, that we wanted to deploy maybe 50, 100 machines or a whole set of client machines. We wanted to deploy the operating systems to these machines or we wanted to deploy an image that we have already set up. We do that with a role in Windows Server 2012 called WDS, Windows Deployment Services. When you deploy that role, you're able to configure the boot file that would allow your client computer to boot from the network card. You are able to configure the image that you want deployed to the bare metal computer. But first, you have to get something from the DHCP server besides the IP address and the other client settings you have to get the PXC client option, which is option 60. And this option contains the location of, your, of the WDS server on the network. So before the WDS server can deploy the images to these client computers, the DHCP server gives the option option 60 and that option again gives you the location of the WDS server on the network. This is how it works. The client computer starts and the client computer tries to perform a network boot, meaning it tries to boot from the network adapter. Now for the client to boot from the network adapter, you actually have to enter the BIOS, which is the UEFI of the client computer, and you have to configure that computer to boot from the network card for its first boot. So you have to do that on the client. And clients that are able to boot from the network card, you refer to them as PXC enable clients. So, the client computer starts, tries to perform the network boot. And, and again, it has to connect to where? 
to the DHCP server on the network, from which it obtains the IP address and the other TCP IP configurations, along with that option 60, the PXE client option, which contains the name of the server. Once that information has gone to that client machine, then the client then connects to the WDS server, and the WDS server supplies the client machine with the boot image. The user on the client machine will select that install image from the boot menu. And once the client does that, the operating system process begins. The installation process of the operating system begins. And from this point, the setup process proceeds just like a manual installation. The point here is that the bare metal computer, the computer that does not have the operating system, cannot see the WDS server unless option 60 is configured. And again, option 60 shows the client the location of the WDS server on the network. And once that client machine finds that server and contacts it, the image then can come down to the client computer and the operating system installation process will begin. Don't forget that the client computer has to be able to boot from the network card and you actually have to go into the BIOS of the computer and configure the network card to be the first boot for that computer. This is the end of this session. I want to thank you for listening.